Okay. So the basic uh, element here is your website, a blog. Now, when you start writing your story, so if there, there's, there will always have to be a blog somewhere in your website. Okay. So it would be good to have a template for your, your blog. And this is a template for what works or what normally works. Okay. So of course you'll have your title and there are a lot of techniques on how to make the right title. We won't talk about this today. Um, I suggest you, you just Google it and uh, get tutorials on, on um, how to come up with the best title for your blog. Okay. And then after your title, make sure you have a lead paragraph. Um, the behavior, the online behavior of people is that they will scan the first paragraph and they make a decision whether to read on or not. So your first paragraph is critical. If you can catch their attention with your first paragraph, you have them and they will continue reading. Okay? So, so this is the most critical part. You make it as interesting as possible. Uh, there are different possible leads you can use, uh, um, you can search leads <laughs> on Google to teach you how to write good leads. Uh, I'm not an expert on, on writing, so I, I, I will not attempt at teaching you about leads. But if you really want to uh, uh, develop effective leads, you just go to Google. Okay? What's most important at this point is for you to understand that you have to catch their attention in the first five seconds, <laughs> otherwise you lose them, and which means you must have an, uh, an, an, an intriguing, interesting title and an interesting lead. Okay? Very often, uh, people are attracted by the image, so you have to have a picture that's associated with your article. The lead, the title, the lead, and the picture, if they go together, Will, will increase the, the, the rate of, uh, uh, of readership, okay? And then, if, as you write your, uh, your blog post, people are drawn by stories, personal stories, so make sure you put in something personal there, okay? It can be a personal experience or personal insights about something that makes it more interesting you, you, and if you draw them into your story, your narrative, your personal narrative, or your organization's narrative, then it becomes a bit more interesting for readers. And then, usually, uh, people are more interested in what they call listicles, <laughs> an article with lists. <laughs> so if, if uh, you're talking about uh, something that you learned about your project, you can you know, do a... Um, uh, uh, bullet points, maybe three, maybe five bullet points. Um, that makes it more readable. It's easier on the eyes and much more interesting. Uh, and then it would be good to end it with a question because you want to invite them into a discussion. Okay? Not, not many people will answer your question and post a, uh, a reply or a comment, not many will do that, but uh, a question at the end increases the possibility that somebody will get engaged and actually post a reply or a comment. Okay, make sure, I showed this to you already, make sure that you have a donation landing page. Okay, the value of a donation landing page is if you write a blog post, for example, and you talk about your project, and then you give them an update, for example, uh, so far we've only reached 35% of our target and we need much more support. If you're interested, if the Lord is touching your heart to take part in our project, please click on our donate page. So, you know, when they click on that, make sure you, you have a hyperlink on it. You, if they click on that, it should lead you to this page. Okay, not anywhere else. You want them, when they, when they click on donate, or when they click on, we need your help, click. They're very close to actually supporting you. 
So you don't want them to wander around. <laughs> you want them to go directly to your donate page so they can make a decision to, uh, to donate. You will notice that in, the, in my donate page, there are different options on how to donate. We place there um, bank deposits, donation through bank deposits. So we gave them the, the bank account number. Uh, in, in our case, it's a BPI account number. Um, they can go anywhere. And we also gave them instructions on how to donate via remittance or pickup. We were giving them every opportunity to give. We make it easier for them to make a decision to give. Uh, so they will not be held up by, uh, I, you know, I, I don't like to use my credit card or it's too inconvenient and we made a decision internally within our organization at church that if somebody said, can you pick up my donation, no matter how much it is. Sometimes we, we, we get requests for, I, I'd like to give my 500 bucks, can you, can you visit me at my house and... So, uh, where do you live? Oh, we're in Merville subdivision. In, we're in Plavdiel, Bulacan. Okay. The cost of gasoline would be more than five. But we do it anyway. Relationship is much more important. Because the first time give will become, you know, an, a regular giving relationship. Maybe... From 500, they'll increase it to 2,000, 5,000 in the future. We were willing to do that because we said it's important that we draw this person into our story. Okay? It's a decision we made. I don't know about you if you're going to make that decision. But for us, we were happy to do it. We, we, we got a... <laughs> uh, sometimes we, we accepted uh, donations, not in cash, but in kind. So there was somebody who said, hey, I've got some extra pancit here and, and bihon, you know, that I'm not using. Maybe you can pick it up. We were throwing a party, so we said, hey, great, we can, we can have pancit for, for, uh, for lunch, okay? We got a whole bunch of <laughs> pancit bihon. <laughs> They were not using, they, they said, oh, we're not using this anymore, we're not, we're not having a party anytime soon, why don't we just give them anyway. So we, we went to her house, we, we picked it up. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then um, once they, they, uh, they make it, they click on it and they say, uh, Please pick up my donation, and usually it sends out an email to us, and this is how it looks. Uh, this person said, pick up, donation pick up, amount 1,500, so th this is a person's name, and then they place here the address, so we know exactly where to go, uh, and you know, it, it made everything easier. We, all we looked at was email ad, uh, our email account, get, getting people coming in who wanted to donate. Okay. Now let's talk about Facebook. Um, and when we talk about Facebook, we'll, we're basically talking about the social media platform where 90% <laughs> of online users are, are, uh, are in and they're using it. Okay. We can talk about Twitter, of course, but you know, things will become much more complicated and not many people, not many Filipinos are, are on Twitter anyway. We can talk about Instagram, but not many people are on Instagram. We can talk about Snapchat, but uh, you know, it can take us in a different direction. But when we talk about Facebook, we're basically saying, this is where Filipinos are. We have to be here, okay? I can't, talk, I, I can't tell you the full range of options that Facebook has. All I can talk about at this point would be three major things. One is you set up your Facebook page for your project and you need to link it to your website. Okay? When I say link, 
it means in your website there has to be you have to get the link of your Facebook page and should put it in the website so that when somebody gets to your website and they see a Facebook uh, icon there when they click on it it should not go anywhere but your Facebook page they go hand in hand they're always a match okay now every time you post on your website a, an article or an update you make sure you post it in your Facebook page so the Facebook page is to draw people into your community but we can also set up a call to action uh, and when we say call to action this is what we mean by it um, in our case, this is our call to action, contact us on Facebook page. So if they keep going back to the, web, uh, to the Facebook page, eventually they'll get to see it. If they're interested enough, enough they'll contact us. Okay. What we can do to set this up is when they click on it, they go to our website. Better yet, when they click on it, they go to the donate page. Um, Facebook has set it up so that uh, certain qualified organizations can place a donate button. Uh, qualified organizations in the U.S. with the 501 uh, qualification, they can set up a donate button because they're a qualified organization. World Vision has, you have your World Vision in the U.S. So they, you have a, you can, do you have a donate button in your? Yeah. Okay, so th they can do that. Uh, smaller organizations like ours, <laughs> we can do it. So the best I can do at this point is put up a contact us button. It's a call to action. It provides an opening for people who become interested enough to take action. Okay, especially if they keep uh, seeing your, your, uh, your, uh, your call to action or your request for donation or asking people to help out and they don't know how to help out, they don't know where to find you, and they see the contact us, there's a higher chance that they'll click it and they'll go to your, your website or your donate page, okay? Part of your community, not crowd, people in your community to become part of your committed financial supporters, okay? You draw them in further into, the, into your relationship. Now, for your more committed followers, I suggest you come up with a group, okay? A Facebook group. So a Facebook group now is a, it's something like people who know each other, people who, who are like-minded and we want to come together, let's have a meeting <laughs> or let's have a Let's have a conference here, okay? So only those who are like-minded or deeply committed to the cause will be brought into the, into the group. And every time you post there, there's always a notification among the group members that, hey, there's a new, there's a new uh, post in your, in your group. There's a, always a higher chance that they get to see it, okay? Than simply putting up a post on your Facebook page, okay? So this is a, a different thing altogether. I, I can show you, I, I don't have a group for Blessed Child because it's only a small group of people anyway. So everybody in the group um, get to interact in this, this group. Um, every time somebody posts here, I will get a notification that there's a new post, so there's a higher likelihood that I will get to read it, okay? This for people with a higher interest in your, in your cause, in your project, in your organization. Um, uh, if you put somebody here who's not really interested, most likely they will opt out of the group. They will leave the group because they don't really enjoy your post, so they will opt out, okay? That's why I'm recommending you only bring in those who are really committed to the cause because they're interested in your post, okay? So this is a, this is different from a page, a Facebook page, 
which is your presence you have a public face within Facebook I'm here okay so if you like me you come over okay that's a that's your Facebook page a group is so people who who are committed enough let's you know let's get into a room and let's have a meeting here we can we will only talk about things we're interested in within this closed in room it's like that okay it's really more for people who are really committed to your cause or committed to your project so it's they're interested enough to be placed in that box okay we understand the difference okay. so in our in our overall strategy we want uh, we want people in the crowd to get in to the community and they do that by liking your Facebook page okay people that you don't know they've heard about your organization they like it enough they like the story enough that they want to know more about it they can like your Facebook page so this is from the crowd to the committed okay but those who are in the crowd already and they keep hearing your great stories on Facebook sometimes they go to your website they keep hearing those stories and now they're challenged these guys are really doing great work and you know I I have extra five billion bucks here in my wallet so why don't I help them out okay so those who are in the in the in your community in your Facebook community you want them to make a further step becoming a committed financial supporter you provide an avenue for them to do that by putting up a call to action on your Facebook page okay so when they make that call to action they take that step they click on call to action or, or contact us or donate they go to your website they actually donate or they learn about how to give they sent e an email where can you pick this up in my house at my house or you know they, they, they found different ways they called up once they did that they become part of your you know your committed group now your committed group now you want to deepen the relationship you want them to you know you want to draw them in further into the relationship my suggestion is you put them together in a group because now you can nurture them you can keep you know posting uh, updates on the project only for your group you can be more personal there because this is your closing group okay occasionally you can send them email newsletters uh, because this is your committed and your uh, your core members you can be more personal in this space because they they know you they like what you do they're excited about what's happening in your project and you can you know it can nurture the relationship through those channels